Mars, Pac-Man, yeah. Atari, Love. Uh, Asteroids, Galaga. Galaga, your favorite. Pitfall. Rally X. Pitfall. The two of you. Burger Time. M missile Command. <laughs> Centipede. Space Invaders. Yes, oh. we love them all. Come on! Uh, do those <laughs> remind you of anything? 80s or 90s? Some good times. All I remember 70s? is my son not being able to put down Pokemon. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> That's all I remember. Okay, well, now you can relive the glory days at the National Video Game Museum in Frisco. And it actually opens this weekend. GMT Shannon Paul Hart is there live this morning for Tech Tuesday. Hey, Shannon, what's going on? Good morning. Good morning. Well, you know the minute you walk into this museum that you're going to have fun when you have a Super Mario brother right there in your face. And this National Video Game Museum is so spectacular and fun, but the person who knows the most about it is right here, Joe Santulli. How are you? Hello, how are you this morning? I am well. So let's start at the very beginning. You walk in and I see this brown box. What on earth? This is the very first home game system, the prototype used to make that. Oh, and how have we come a long way, starting over here with Pong, the different styles that you had. You even had Puppy Pong? Puppy Pong was in doctor's offices to keep kids busy back in the day. Uh -huh. And it's really popular, and I see you have Odyssey up there as well, and you're saying that was one of the first uh, video games inside the home. Not only was it the first, but you had to connect these plastic overlays to your television set in order to get graphics. Uh -huh. All it was was lights behind the screen. Now, what's going on here? Now, you know I'm not I'm going to destroy good. you, and Pong is what's going on. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, I can't even get this. So you have this life-size screen that the minute I walk in the door, I kind of see this. How big is this screen here? The screen's probably 15 feet wide. It is the largest home game console right now. Certainly the very largest Pong. Now, uh, let, let's talk about this. 10,000 square feet of just a little bit of everything that you can think of when it comes to the video game. 10,000 square feet mm -hmm. from Pong to PlayStation 4 and someday PlayStation 5. Ah. Video game transcends all eras for very, very many years and includes handhelds and game consoles and arcade machines and computers. And what are we looking at here on this wall? This is the game line, this is the timeline of game consoles. So we mm -hmm. have 50 game systems that were released in the United States. Um, and these giant digital screens that kind of give you a map of all those. So if you wanted to learn more, you could step up, punch in one of the games that you're interested in, and it tells you everything from the price of it to its processor to what else was going on in the world when that game came out. And over here to our right, we have a number of different games. I see PlayStation, Atari, Panasonic. I, I don't think I realized they had a video console. Also, um, Nintendo. So this is interactive. You can actually sit and play these games. Every area of this museum is meant to be interactive in some way and this particular hall that we call head-to-head -head hall mm -hmm. consists of things that you may remember and a whole lot that you maybe never even knew about so we're introducing people to some game systems for the first time and for the special for this museum you even had local artists to come in and draw every video character that we could think of <laughs> we had some of the greatest local artists come in and everything that you see here is hand-painted nothing is vinyl decals um, it's just the love of gaming thrown up on some giant walls. Now, Joe, over here, we can see that um, one of the, everything is behind glass and plastic containers where we can't touch it. What's going on here? You say it's all interactive. Yeah, you know, we had all these great stories to tell and we did those in interactive fashion, but then we got to our collection and said, you know what, we've got some really cool individual items. How do we get those to people? So we did a little bit of a museum-y thing here and we have display cases where you can learn a little something about one of a kinds and very, very rare items. Like this super cool laser disc Yeah, this system. is a Halcyon <laughs> system, a game system that was meant to be played on laser discs. And what about the board games here? What did this have to do with video games? We were kind of show, here we're trying to show how um, board games had been so popular for so long and video games kind of came along okay. and took over and they were adjusting themselves to what was about to come. So they're All creating right. board games based on video games. I know we have to go. I know you have an arcade here. You use certain tokens here, but what is this part of the museum that Don is gonna come to in just a second? So you see the arcade, but what's going on here? Because this looks like someone's living room. It is. <laughs> it's mine. Okay. Well, it's circa 1981. 
1981 living room and a 1987 bedroom, capturing snapshots in time when video games had become a new thing in the house. First time mom put a game console in your television mm -hmm. living room. First time you got a Nintendo wow. when you were a kid. And do you think this museum is going to take off here in the North Texas area? I certainly hope it will. We've really put a lot of heart and thought into what we're doing mm -hmm. to bring people a fun, interactive experience that's also educational. And real quick, the website if people want more information because I know you're opening on Saturday. We are and the website is www.nvmusa.org. All right, Joe, thank you so much. We're live here at the National Video Game Museum. You heard the website. Go and find out more information. I'm Shannon Powell-Hart for Good Morning Texas.